Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the second uh, webinar uh, of the CIS, Centre International d'Estudes du Sport, International Centre of Sports History, the second season. We started two weeks ago. And uh, if you need more, please do not hesitate to, uh, to contact us to, to know more about our past and future program. Today, uh, we are dealing uh, with an important issue, which is a financial issue regarding uh, the situation of financing sports uh, with, this, uh, with this crisis, with the COVID. And uh, uh, we found a title, show us the money. Show me the money is the, is the issue. We have uh, four of our alumni, three of the FIFA Master, one from the International Network. And I will start uh, with uh, Pascal, Zom Pascal Zomerhalda. Pascal was a student in the third edition of the FIFA Master. Pascal is Swiss, but he lives in Rome uh, and he works for some years now uh, at Infront. Uh, uh, welcome, Pascal. How, how is the situation in Rome? Yes, hi, Pierre. Hi, everybody. Well, the situation in Rome is, I guess, pretty much the same as elsewhere in, in, in Europe. I mean, if you now refer to COVID, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, numbers are raising and, yeah, the government has taken measures. I should be sitting here with a mask, but I spare you this one. Um, yeah, but I think uh, pretty much the same as, as in most other European countries. And, um, financially, I guess we're going to talk later, so I'll, uh, I'll just shut yeah. up. <laughs> well, uh, the second one is Raul Fagalde, uh, live from Buenos Aires. It's early morning in, in Buenos Aires. Raul was a student uh, of the 2012 edition of uh, the CIS Universidad Católica Argentina project, and he is the marketing director of Puma in Argentina. Uh, Raul, how are you, and how is the situation in, in Buenos Aires at the moment? Well, hello everyone. As Pascal was saying, uh, the situation here is very tough. We are in quarantine almost for 200 uh, days, so it's a lot. And the situation is, uh, seems to be uh, complicated, still complicated, so we'll see what will happen from now on. Okay, the next uh, speaker will be Norman Liu. Norman was a FIFA master student of the 2014 edition uh, and uh, he joins us live from uh, from Beijing. Uh, so we have somebody where we have an early morning, somebody has already <laughs> finished his working day uh, like you Norman. Uh, and Norman uh, works with uh, with the Coca-Cola uh, uh, project at the moment in, in Beijing. How are you Norman uh, and how is the situation in, in Beijing? Hello everyone, I'm good and uh... Very nice to see you again here. And uh, right now in Beijing, the season is very good and uh, everything is under control by the government and the anti-virus thing is very good. And also for the sports things, the CSL, the Super, uh, the China Super League, the Soccer One coming back. And also the unfinished, the last season, the basketball uh, league finished. And also the new season will come in uh, one week. So, yeah. Great. So it's almost back to normal then. Yeah, almost back to normal. <laughs> and uh, also the Beijing 2022, the Winter Olympic Games in a very good uh, process of preparing. So, yeah. It's, 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 it's nice to hear that. Uh, last one uh, will be, uh, uh, will be uh, Sean Dempsey, uh, alumni of the FIFA Master 2015. Uh, Sean is in New York, so we really have uh, the big cities uh, in the world. And Sean works for City, Citibank uh, Global uh, Partnership Team and is specialized in sponsorship and in governance as well. So how is the situation in New York, uh, Sean? Well, it's a tough time at the moment, we know. Yeah, good, good morning. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Uh, New York's in a, in a very odd sense of safety i would say um the situation is not as bad as it was at one point but i think we're all fearing that it could easily switch back um and then obviously you have the rest of the country that's at a very different stage and no matter where you look so you know being in a global organization or even just a national organization having different 
levels and, and stages has been quite unique uh, over the past eight months. Okay, thank you. Thank you all four of you. I mean, uh, we have a very large panel, uh, some of you being involved in, in, in different, uh, different capacities in the field of sport, a male-only element. I mean, we discussed earlier with all of you, it's not reflecting exactly the situation in sports, I think, and in sports finance, uh, but, uh, but we, we, it's, it's an accident. There is no policy from our side to have men only. Just to make it clear, um, it's, it's based on the reality. Well, to start with, probably uh, the question many people may ask us is, uh, are we going slowly back to the normal life in find, finding sponsorship in sports. Pascal, do you have the impression that everything is going back to how it was or will there be a before COVID and after COVID in thinking about how to find it? No, I think, I mean, okay, there will be, there will be, I mean, in terms of finding money or sponsors, if you just refer to sponsors, I think there's not going to be too many changes as, as to how you approach the markets and try to find sponsors. I mean, the offering may change, it will be much more uh, digitally driven, it will be much more fan engagement driven, these kind of things. But for me, just to go out in the market and find sponsors, I think the principles are still the same, so that's not going to change. Uh, then where I would see some differences, but that's not really speaking about sponsors, it's more about how federations or rights holders, how they are um, financing themselves. So there, for instance, you can see there's a lot of venture capital and equity funds that uh, is coming gradually into the sports landscape. And I think that's, that's going to be a big change and it's going to be interesting to see how they operate differently from the likes of, of, of us, for instance, in front. We are a leading major um, agency group. And um, yeah, it's interesting to see what, what, what kind of approach they take. Uh, because essentially, we had a similar role in the past. You know, we, we go to right folders, we are the bank, if you want, a hidden bank. We give them the finance for the next 10, year, 10 years, get the, money, uh, they get the marketing rights, and then try to exploit this, these rights. And yes, I'm, I'm interested to see what, what, what's happening in terms of equity funds and sports federations. So probably we have to go directly to Sean to that, because the other side of the equity funds is, uh, is, is Citibank and, 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 and the bank side and the equity. How does it work at the moment in your case? I mean, have yeah. everything really changed? Can we speak really on a new policy after the COVID? It's, it's an interesting one because we kind of have a dual responsibility, much like everyone else on the panel, we have kind of the commercial uh, responsibility that we have to our partners. So making sure that our partners are whole, are made whole, but also making sure that our dollars are protected in a way that, you know, the, the budgeting and financing is working for us. So we have to be as cautious as probably every other um, uh, organization in the market in terms of sponsorship. We have the other side of the coin is that our core function is to finance and um, stabilize kind of societies during times like this, but then also just protect our clients' interests as well. So um, as Pascal was saying, with private equity coming in, um, a lot of those are our clients. So we kind of have a, a fiduciary duty to them to kind of serve in their best interest while also sitting on the commercial side, working to basically in the, in the best interest of sport and society. Um, so it's a very complex dance that we have to to, to perform. Um, but I think that from an equity side, I, I think it's fortunately for them, one of the one of the things that have made it out of this situation in quite a good place. Um, but in terms of where our customers are, we have the mass audience all the way to the richest people in the world. So it's a very delicate balance that we have um, when thinking about sponsorship and financing and support. Yeah. Uh, and and uh... Uh, in in uh, in China, you told you, you told me uh, Norman that uh, things are, are getting more uh, back to normal. Do you see that in in the way uh, the flow of money is is spent in sport at the moment? There is is there a normal back to before the crisis? Uh, I have to say they are kind of the postponed about the money coming back to sport. I have to say that because the sponsor. Uh, normally, the branding side, they will have some new strategy or new plan for the next year. And uh, currently, 
I think still the sports industry we are we are still facing some challenge. And uh, to be honest, in my opinion, I think if there's no such kind of the global crisis about uh, uh, convoy 19, uh, for the sports right holder, we still need to find the innovation spirit in in the way to improve our product in in the way to uh, improve how the how the how the experience with the partnership so yeah still a long way i think uh, maybe one year or two year for the real money coming back i think for the challenge could be how the right holder can can fighting with the budget from the sponsor side great the innovative limitation. with stakeholders that's a good topic we can I, you, you just speak between yourself i can i can leave you uh, and and we find the solution raul you explained it us earlier that uh, uh, the situation is complex for for you in argentina because you're working with a multinational where you have to to deal uh, on a global scale while at, at national level it's much more complex can you explain us a bit what, what the situation is i think Yes, right, exactly. Here is pretty, uh, as I was telling before, it's really complex because um, we are a global company. So, on, so in one hand, we have to follow all the strategic, all the plans, all the launches that uh, global is uh, producing and all the campaigns. But on the other hand, as uh, the situation here is very difficult, it's very tough, more economic. Um, of course, the first thing that every company got is uh, marketing. Uh, so from our side, we got everything. All the OPEX was uh, went to zero. Uh, we we had to do all organic, uh, but but on the other hand, we have to sell. Uh, so we have to do a lot of things, uh, as I mentioned, organic with influencers. We we have to talk with our players, uh, soccer players that that we sponsor with our club we have we sponsored independiente that is one of the best clubs here in argentina so we have to sit with them to to make a, a deal together to talk uh, to say okay uh, what do we have to do uh, you know that we cannot pay everything now because we are not selling but on the other hand we have a, a contract that we have to complain so uh, we finally we 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 could arrange uh, something with them. And right now we are starting to sell again. We have to reach our consumer. Uh, we start we start little by little to, to invest uh, in some things uh, for marketing. Um, we start launching again all the products, but investing much less money than we used to. So, uh, it's what Norman was saying earlier is the key. You need all to be innovative and close to your partners. To, to exactly. Your, your job, your job is, is changing a little bit. What about the stress of the time? You know, finance time was money. So now, yes. now that the you have to change everything with time. How do you deal with it? How do you deal with events? Pascal was telling us earlier, and that's so interesting, that e events are becoming more and more important, probably, in, in the elements that you may sponsor. Are there new kind, if, if our viewers are interested to know what kind of events, what kind of elements are priorities at the moment, and some are a bit less sponsored at the moment, where would you say uh, are the key? The, the key elements you are sponsoring at the moment, or you yeah, are going? It, at least in our case, the first thing we do with all events is evaluate the return the return of investment, eh? ROI, that for us is the key. Uh, if we have money back, we do it. If not, we don't do it. Um, and uh, a mantra we have here is less is more, so we do less things, but with more money if we have 100 bucks okay we have to decide we put 100 dollars in this event or one dollar in each event and we decide here to invest i don't know just to say something 100 dollars in one big event that we for sure we have the return of the money that we are talking about 
Um, we are not a fan of events because, uh, as I told you, we have a lot of, a lot of KPIs, uh, cost per contacts, ROI, I don't know, a lot of things. So before do an event, we have to really to, to be very, very clear that the return of the money was to be uh, positive. If not, we don't do it. Of course, we have to reinvent. Uh, everything is... Pascal, Pascal, for the people who, uh, who, who invest a lot on events, do you, do you, do you yes. behave differently? You think? Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I think the methodology hasn't changed. I mean, now you're, if I understand you correctly, you're asking me what what uh, the scope is or how things change in, in terms of acquiring rights or, or, or are we still on the sponsorship side? I mean, in terms of acquiring rights, uh, I think you will just be very much more cautious in, in how to enter into negotiations. And I mean, obviously there will be a lot of learning that we've now had from, uh, from the COVID. Because, I mean, if you talk about finance, it's not only buying, it's also, I think it's also cost saving. And that's obviously something we are trying to do in front. You know, we have 180 rights in partners, so clubs, federation. The first thing you do or we do is renegotiating our contracts. And exactly the same thing as sponsors come to me and say, well, there is no hospitality any longer. You know, in the case of Serie A, uh, I mean, it's, 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 there's a lot of negotiation going on also on the cost side. So, and all the learning we have made there that will be um, now put to practice for future um, acquisitions. At the same time, I mean, you were, or I was actually referring to equity right now. I mean, there's also a very interesting moment to buy things. And I mean, also for us as an agency, I mean, because like patients, they are, I wouldn't say close to being bankrupt, depends on what, what sports and what, what league, but they are struggling. So, I mean, I'm in a good position to come again and say, well, let's renew for another 20 years. And, so let's say it's a good, it's a good moment, and, and at the same end, same applies for sponsors. You know, you, know, you never could buy as much and so so good as you can right now. Um, and just to conclude, if we talk about sports, I mean, for us, I think two gross areas are one is esports, which clearly has demonstrated to be super interesting, especially for younger audiences. And in COVID times, I mean, the, the, the numbers went actually not through the but they went up and the other that's more for when things get back to normal is everything to do with healthy lifestyle and you know like uh, running fitness and these kind of things great uh, i had a question from uh, from one of our listener a certain kevin i don't know kevin master a former people master student uh, and he said well you know uh, can we see uh, what is happening as a comparison with what happened to ISL 20 years ago? When the sports industry was living in a bubble, and when this bubble exploded, uh, they had to reinvent themselves a little bit in the industry, I mean, for the football industry. Okay. Is there, is there uh, some of the doubts at the moment regarding Media Pro and the TV rights, for example, and others connected to this concept of bubble? Together with the crisis, uh, how, how does it how does it impact the financing of sports? Uh, I can jump in. Um, yes. At least from our, in our from our side, we've been um, much more rigorous in terms of how we hold our partners to account with our with our sponsorships. Um, so you know, while I wouldn't say it's maybe directly um, the same situation in terms of a bubble that burst, I think. What to Pascal, what Pascal's point earlier was that people are now going to be much more accountable for the dollars they spend. Um, so with the partners, it's not just going to be a logo slap anymore. Um, not that people would rely on that anyway, but it's going to be much more rigorous in terms of how we're using our dollars. Um, and I think it's going to have maybe kind of front end caution in terms of how the activation actually occurs in terms of new environments, if they're shifting to traditional sports to esports, if you're shifting from uh, on-site to uh, um, an online presence um, in terms of how you activate, I think there's going to be a lot of caution probably in the front end, um, but I think it's really going to help expand the industry because it's going to, one, create a lot more accountability, both from the rights holder side and the sponsor side, um, and then it's essentially going to make the, the 
um, the landscape a little bit more competitive and probably more interesting. Um, so I, I think probably from a, a landscape or, or a sponsorship perspective, I think that you'll see a lot more interesting um, activations come out of this probably that you would have seen, we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, but I think it will take some time for everyone to figure out what that is, um, just because everyone's kind of working from the same zero point. Um, yeah, it's it's very interesting because it's it brings us back to the last uh, webinar we had two weeks ago, where uh, uh, Tiziano from uh, from uh, the UEFA uh, champion uh, Champions League said, you know, now instead of having having five hundred uh, of uh, hundred and fifty officials organizing the match. We have 50, and uh, uh, we saw that we can do uh, with with people staying home. The same said by 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 Adam from uh, from the Formula One. They, the, the operating costs are diminished quite a lot. Uh, is it the same in planning for 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 uh, Beijing, for example, for the next Olympics? Uh, Beijing Olympics still we have more than one year to go more and and uh, i think things will be getting better <laughs> uh in the february of uh 2022 so <laughs> i just i just thinking maybe yeah yeah we will have more audience on site for the for the for the event uh, but currently still we are we have to suffer from the anti empty stadium so as here you, you said the the uh, official broadcaster they also uh, get big uh, influence with the sports event. So the right holder they have to rely on the uh, quality of the official broadcasting program to attract the fans and then track the money, track the money from sponsor. And also uh, one thing happened in China in Chinese uh, sports business is about the EPL, the Premier League. Uh, they broke with the uh, PP sports before, uh, so yeah, kind of the yeah, uh, the things happen with the uh, broadcasting will affect the sponsorship as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th there are new elements that are changing, like like the OTT. Uh, some of the discussions are now about using basically using the crisis to say let's renegotiate it. Do you? Do you see it in your in your daily life? Does it? Are you in a moment where a lot of the of the of the contracts of the uh, have, have been re renegotiated on a completely new basis? Who wants to start? Uh, I, I can go. Uh, I can. Uh, <laughs> all, okay. all together. That's right. So <laughs> let's. Start, let's yeah, start I shall. Yeah, I would say from March until about July, I worked more with my legal team than I did with my other marketing contacts. Um, my job completely shifted in terms of scrutinizing contracts, both That's in great getting money. Some low lectures at the. Uh, 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 exactly. I wouldn't have survived without them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was very interesting because our my job, or at least within the city, became more of a legal job in terms of scrutinizing contracts, see where some financials could come back to the organization, um, but also renegotiate rights in terms of um, what we're getting or, nor, or more this new environment of what we now can get because there is a, just a different offering that's um, available to sponsors like us. Um, so I think that it, it's created a, a lot of complexity in terms of the day-to-day -day work. But I think the negotiations has really been to from both sides, really, to and, I, and I've seen it at least in my work is, is it's been done in a lot of good faith. Um, I think everyone realizes the situation and we're all working to kind of make the most out of it. Um, and I think we've all done a really good job at not only analyzing the rights that we currently have, but how we're going to exploit them in the future, um, whether it's with new contracts, whether it's contract extensions, whether it's asset renegotiations. Um, it, it became a very pivotal part of a job that might not have existed, might not have been as um, in focus um, prior. Great. Uh, Raul, you, you, you had some point on that? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty similar to what Sean was saying. Um, in our case, the best uh, or the most important contract we have is with Independiente. But at the beginning, the very, very first month, maybe March and April, uh, we didn't have or we didn't want to to change anything because we supposed that this COVID 
or at least the quarantine was going to be only a month, two months. But after the third month, we talked internally and, and of course we had to decide what to do. And in our case with Independiente, as I told you before, we had to sit with them and talk about which is the best situation for the two of us. And unfortunately, we reached the, 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 the point of, we finally reached this uh, agreement. A balanced situation between, yeah, an agreement between the two of us because we have, it's very, very important at least here to have very good relation with the, with the teams uh, because we both are in the same uh, business and if we sell, they, they win and, uh, and if we do the things uh, well, everything go up. Uh, it's gonna uh, going well. So uh, finally, with Independiente, we reach a good agreement. Um, but yes, we changed the way we we used to work a lot. Uh, at the beginning, I didn't think every day about the contract, but right now I am checking every day all the contract for the influencers, the players, uh, to see what we have to change. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I can imagine, as you said earlier. Uh, uh, Patrick Casto, uh, former, uh, I mean, Norman knows him, they were in the, in the same class. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and he worked in, 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 the, in the Buenos Aires Youth Olympic. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I imagine, uh, Pascal, that what you said earlier, I mean, when you, are, when you, are, when you spend so much time in the, in the past years to give the influencers and the big sponsors uh, nice places in stadiums and now the new rules is they cannot go to the stadiums you have to completely rethink your 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 your, your way of uh, uh, offering great contracts to potential uh, to potential partners or business partners yes i mean i guess the key there is not to try to talk about money but about uh, you know like uh, granting them access to other assets in whatever form the majority of them probably are in a digital uh, or taking place in the digital space but um, yeah I would say when it comes to sponsors uh, our, our tactic is to try to not discuss about fees but uh, offer a compensation in terms of other assets they value highly um, and there is also, I mean, okay, that's the advantage of an uh, agency like ours. I mean, we have so many properties we're working with that you can, and some of them are on, you know, like, I mean, many of our events, they are not on and, and others are on. So maybe you can compensate or shift, get them some visibility instead of, I don't know, handful. If they accept, you can integrate them in other sports that are on. And, um, as I say, for us, it's important to, to, to also do the knowledge transfer because all the markets are negotiating with their sponsors, all the markets are negotiating with their rights holders. So we just need to make sure that the knowledge is um, transferred and, 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 and we are at the top or ahead of the game, I would say. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty critical. Do you see a lot of knowledge transfer between the sports, goods and sports events industry and other kind of industry that are touched? Like, uh, like other, uh, I think, like the movie industry, like the entertainment industry, other kind of entertainment. Are you lot in touch with all those, or everybody's? Well, I'm not sure whether that's happening on an industry specific level. I guess that's down on to 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 Puma, to City, to us, to 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 watch across other industries and and and, and take their learnings and insights. And okay, there are some bigger. You know, like portals, whether that's sport business or sport call or Nielsen, these kind of uh, organizations, they obviously try to, I think, uh, provide you with insights also from other industries and whether that's now sporting goods or others. I think, yes, but ultimately it's your own, it's in your own interest, I think, and it depends on how, how your company is structured and how, how much value they put on insights and, and, and on cross fertilization from other industries and so on. Yeah, and do you, do you know, you, you are all four here representing different sectors. One is re representing the sport goods, uh, one is rep representing uh, the, the financing uh, industry, the third one uh, uh, is, is dealing with one of the 
traditional major sponsor of the sports uh, events that are, I mean, and federation that is connected with youth and de- uh, by Coke, Coca Cola, and the and the fourth one is dealing with uh, really the industry that. Uh, focuses on sports to create an, uh, an like in front do you do you do you speak to each other the, 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 because the interests are so different at the moment i can imagine that the discussion is difficult between the the interest of the various stakeholders because that's an industry where the stakeholders that may have uh, for once similar problems because normally when one has, has problems, the other doesn't. That, that's the first time probably you all have problems. Does it yeah. help to develop a uh, discussion, Norman? Uh, actually, uh, I had the call with Pascal last year before the, before the convoy and uh, other things, uh, other per- projects. But I think right now, back to the uh, question asked by Pierre, I think right now it's the real time to test the UN, to to test the relationship between the right holder and the, the sponsor. Uh, in Chinese, we have such thing saying like, uh, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So during the hard time, I think it's, it's for everyone, not only for the uh, sport right holder, but also for some sponsor, for some branding. Uh, everyone is facing a new challenge, which, which not happened before. So I think right now, it's now talking about we should uh, break the agreement we should uh, coming out from the previous uh, relationship. But uh, everyone should think about how to find the, the new synergy of some in, in, the, in, the, in the new uh, innovative way to produce the best or the better product to the fans, to the audience, to the, mm-hmm. to the common interest. Great. I, I will. I noted already. I wrote down. A friend in need is a friend indeed. So that's that's great. Uh, this 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 Chinese <laughs> say. Uh, and 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 I think that's that's very interesting. I, I saw that that Pascal was laughing in 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 getting that. Do you develop your talks with your partners or in in the moment, even if it's uh, virtual talks? <laughs> Is that one going to me, or I wasn't? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, I think to be honest, in times like these, what you can do, or well, I mean, I guess every every sales person has a different approach, but I think it's just to be close to your to your partners and and, and, and understand their needs and the, their worries, and, and yes, it's not so much about. I think you need to know when to talk about sales or sponsorship and when not to talk about sponsorships. I think okay. Every person has a different level of sensitivity there. So I'm not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that depends on, on on the person. And then, as I say, I mean, there are some. Whilst the majority of industries, our industries have suffered or are still suffering, there are some industries that are not. And I think there, the, 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 the talk and the discussion is obviously different. You know, like you can talk about FX industries. You know, like uh, they're doing reasonably well. Some betting, the delivery and freight companies, they're also doing fine. So these would be. Um, Products uh, I'm interested to talk to and obviously try to build a relationship and ultimately sell them the sponsorship idea or proposition. So, I mean, I think ultimately there's not much training. I think it's more a natural. <laughs> we, we, we just had a comment, not a question, from a, uh, an alumni from the FIFA Master, Zach from the sixth edition, who works uh, in we work, we works in Qatar, and they said, well, you know, just a comment. We we host in 16 club in Doha uh, for the Asian Champions League with minimal operational staff and the strict COVID protocol. And these are the new norms. And uh, we have to deal with these new norms, uh, new normal until the vaccine is in the market. Uh, what what they did was, was, was quite interesting, in fact, yeah, with, with trying to get new uh, new competition with 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 a large number of participants. I mean, the, the Champions League in, in in Portugal seems to have worked well as well. But uh, yesterday I was uh, having a discussion uh, with 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 you uh, in, to prepare the, the element, and what what impressed me a lot is the degree of uh, need of knowledge that you all get. You know to know well the situation and not losing too much, not to go too quickly. It's, it's a new vision of finance. Can I see that? Can I say that way? Before everything was to be 
very quick. Now it's my impression is taking a bit more time, accepting that that time is is maybe less uh, the main player in in the industry. Does it? Yeah. I see, Sean, Sean, your, your, yeah, your it's, it's, been an, it's been an interesting one for us because um, back to your previous point about just knowledge transfer and collaboration for a large multinational, and I'm sure Raul has the same, but being on the other side, I, I said on the global team. So for a large kind of portion of our work, we're, we're focused on kind of the, the global landscape and the global strategy, but we really kind of... Um, we really needed more local insight and regional insight. So our partners in Australia, China, um, Argentina, wherever they may be, you know, we were connected to them. But I think this has really put a, uh, a nice pause to really enforce collaboration within large organizations. Um, it, it's it's also been a nice reset for us in terms of, um, you know, maybe in the past you would just go day to day doing a lot of the same work. Um, without really questioning the, the work that you're doing because it either has worked in the past or it's quite comfortable. Um, but what I think this opportunity has done is, is really allowed people to kind of just almost hit the reset button um, to really make a, a determined path of what the next, you know, one to two years out of this situation will be, but more importantly, what the next five to 10, um, what we want that to look like for the organization. Um, so even internally, we're working with a lot more stakeholders across the sponsorship world, um, even within city, to, to ensure that whatever plan we put in place moving forward, it involves not only all lines of business, uh, which might have had a bit of a silo elements in the past, uh, but also the, the regions in which and the countries in which they sit. Um, so I think that level of collaboration has really been uh, amplified during this process. And similarly, I think that we're seeing um, more of a long-term reset. So we're really scrutinizing the portfolios that we have internally to say, has this really worked for us? Is this really doing the job? And if so, is it at the same price points? And how can we maybe um, distribute our finances and budget in a, in a, in a different way um, to maybe not only help the partner, but help the community? Um, and I think that that type of strat strategic renegotiation of even our own policies has been quite useful. Um, even if it was forced upon us in, in this situation. And I think from a, a business standpoint, I think it's been uh, yeah. quite a nice turn. No, great. Uh, I mean, from what I heard until now, there are two words that, that have been central. The first one was to be innovative. The second one was to be accountable and accountability. What about prior to prioritizing, prior, prior, uh, taking priority? Okay. Prior you have it, you have it here. <laughs> <laughs> what about prayer? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Let me let me say it. okay. Um, I think in our case that's the the key point. Prioritize uh, or think which are the priorities. Uh, and in our case, we have two two or three things. But first is as I said before, we have hundred of hundred dollars. To, to say something, okay, what, where would we invest that hundred dollars in a lot of things or in one thing that return that that make us return more money? Uh, so we also we so we, we always think about uh, about about that. Uh, at least in Puma, um, we don't have a huge budget, so uh, it's not the same as maybe other. Uh, other other brands, the so other you have side to keep focus. In the other side of the same city of Erzogenaura, maybe. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I say it. yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. But you know what? Regarding the the other question, uh, I, I was thinking that I uh, I've been in Puma for seven years, and because of this situation, this COVID situation, is the first time that I had I had to call my colleague of. Uh, on, uh, from Herso, uh, from the other brand of Herso, uh, and ask him, "Hey, what are you doing uh, with your with your teams? Are you gonna, are you going to do something? Are you going to cut the retainer fee? Uh, uh, what are all your players?" And it was a really really uh, transparent uh, conversation because it was something new for all. So uh, I helped him to decide, and he helped me. Uh, so it was a really very uh, good chat. Um, 
Um, and well, it helped me a lot to decide what to do. But uh, for sure that regarding your question, the priorities is, or, or set priorities is the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's one of the few things. A, a question from one of our former alumni from the FIFA Master First Edition, Cemil Keroglu from Turkey. And Cem was saying, what do you think sport organizations should be doing differently in managing, governing their sport in this decade to achieve and sustain growth? A very simple and basic question, you know. And what do you think should be changed to make it better? We want to, st we want to start with this... Uh, uh, well, I throw in one argument and then I, I would shut up. I mean, I think it, a lot has to do also with, with planning, especially about if you talk about football, football clubs. I mean, they just need to get the, the, the dimensions right, whether that's on a trend. Well, generally on the spending, you know, like you cannot just spend. I mean, some clubs have 110 percent of their uh, budget spending. That's just not sustainable. I think that for me would be a starting point and then Okay, I'll leave the floor to others, but innovation for sure uh, will play a, a big, big, big role and, and OTT, I would yeah. say. But, yeah, I, I shut up, so I'll leave the floor uh, to others. Well, the East. I, I would say that um, from, uh, I mean, for long-term sustainability, it's obviously that's the golden goose that everyone wants the, the answer to. Um, but I think the one thing that is going to be important coming out of this is that it's going to be a lot of testing and learning. Um, and I think that's something that, at least in our industry, hasn't been um, practiced that often because it's, I mean, as it should be, a very secure and, and safe industry to be a part of. Um, just by the, the essence of our business, um, we need that kind of safety and security. But I think sometimes that leaks into the marketing world. And I think what we're seeing now is, at least within City, is a, a very direct change into to being a little bit more, not only innovative, but also willingness to fail. Um, I think that was gonna set us up uh, in the long term, um, and it's gonna probably set partners up as well because they're being challenged to a degree that they probably haven't before, which for, for partners is, is opening up new revenue streams, um, new ways to engage with partners, um, new categories to, to engage, just because the world is gonna look slightly different um, in the short term. So I think the the ability to test and learn and adapt and the willingness to maybe fail um, while failing smartly, I think is the, the key thing for everyone in this uh, financial environment um, will be something that will sustain the industry and then potentially prop it up uh, moving forward in the future. Uh, at least that's something we've seen. Yeah. Any Anything from the East? How is, how is the situation evolving from this point of view, from the from the Chinese, from the Chinese reality that was touched earlier, and which was a, a growing, a growing uh, economy, and us probably to rethink as well about about how the clubs should behave, how the federation should behave, uh, should they spend as much as they did, should they organize all the events they did, you know, countries like like China with 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 their league, with their with the Olympics, with the other Olympics, or, or, or countries like Qatar. The idea that Asia was investing and investing and investing to as much support as mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it coming? Is it has, is, has it been questioned in the last few months? Is there a new yeah. Let's say a new strategy, a new philosophy towards it developing. I think uh, right now, and, and also back to the first question asked by Pierre, I think the priority thing for the, uh, for example, the football club in China should be stay in health. Like uh, if there's no the COVID nineteen happen, uh, the club should also think about the salary gap because previously uh, pay a lot of money. To attract the uh, star from move from Europe, come to China, but uh, in the new season, there's the new policy about the uh, salary gap. I think the league, the club, they are they are all thinking about how to do the right thing in the healthy way. Thinking of, thinking the uh, the way to develop the business in the in the longer uh, term, and um, not only I think about the competition performance side. So I think that's the thing happened in China in the East part. But also for the Beijing Winter Olympics, I think that's, the, that's, that's something we set up the objective uh, in the past uh, seven years. So right now, nothing changed. 
we still uh, aim to develop to deliver a, a very good, uh, very successful Olympic Games uh, for Beijing to be the first one to host both summer and the winter ones. And I think the government uh, support a lot to the winter Olympic Games, the preparation, and also with the uh, cooperation with the partner, with the local partner, with the uh, top partner. So should be um, so should be a chance to build up the the confidence about the uh, inter international Olympic movement for the future. So we can deliver something to Paris, to Milan, to LA in the future. Yeah, and also uh, at the same time, we Coke China team, we, we work very close with the Coke Japan team because Japan, they are suffering from the postponed and the, the, the gap between Tokyo and Beijing from two years become like just, uh, Six months, so yeah, we learn each other. Yeah, good. No, that's 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 very interesting, and that's what uh, what we heard earlier that that people who are not used to speak to each other start to collaborate to 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 make things work, and and, and that's 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 great. Well, we we I will I will go to our last uh, set of questions, and uh, it is about the innovation in. Uh, in financing and in the new products that are financed, uh, one is one is clearly esports, and one other is about uh, the new kind of ownership we we find in 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 clubs, and that has been both being discussed a lot in the recent in the recent uh, realities. What do you see as do you see other new trends? That are that I may not see, and do you see that there is a well uh, a clear vision about uh, how it should be dealt with these two elements: esports financing, more more focus on it. We didn't say a word about women's sports financing, and I have one question on that. Who wants to start? Do you have the impression that if a woman comes and wants to uh, have a project to be financed, uh, maybe for a women's competition, a women's league, or maybe a, a women's event. Uh, are the chance still good or is it diminishing with the crisis? Uh, we heard from some people at, at top institutions like UEFA saying that women's football be, may be one of the elements that more, may more suffer from the crisis because a major club they will first cut their money on their women's team. Do we see the reality from your, your side that way? Well, we're, we're making a pretty concerted effort to kind of put a lot of dollars in that space. Um, from a, a brand perspective outside of sport, I think gender equality is something that at least our organization and, and a, a large part of the financial services industry has done. Um, but I think something that City does a really good job of is promoting gender equity and gender equality. And we're doing that a lot in sport. Um, one of the few changes that we, we've made, even in this time, though something we've been thinking about prior to um, COVID was how do we create um, kind of a, an, an equal partnership uh, landscape within the company? So if we sponsor golfers to make sure that we sponsor both men's and women's equally or somewhat equally, um, if we sponsor football, is it, is it more beneficial to the club to really focus on the women's priorities of, of sustaining and maintaining that all the, the strong work that women's football has done in the past couple of years? So I think something that we might be an, an outlier, and I hope that's not the case, but I think something that is coming to the fore now is that as marketing dollars come back and sponsorship funds come back, I think the practicality of... Um, the same old, I think, is, is is starting to wane a little bit. And I think hopefully people will become a little bit more forthright in just supporting um, women's sports, um, equity, um, just across the, the landscape as well. And, and I think that's something that I, I'm quite proud of um, that we do at City. And then I hope others um, uh, join forces because I really think if there is a concerted effort and the marginal dollar that is spent in women's sports is, is much different than the marginal dollar that's spent in men's sport. I think that if a, a bunch of organizations come together and really put a lot of effort behind it, not only can it sustain the um, 
women's sporting landscape, but I think it really could help it thrive even coming out of this, um, considering that the, the work that clubs want to do. Um, so they just need the help to do it. Great. Uh, I I have two questions from uh, from the audience and from alumni. One from one of our teacher and former student from Argentina, Leo Piccoli, who say, well, what, what happened if it's just the first of a series of pandemics? How do you see the sport industry in this bad scenario? Who wants to start? <laughs> well, if the, if the COVID one is just first of a series of pandemics. Well, that will be a conversation. Here we go, here we go. No, no, go ahead, but come, go ahead. Uh, as I mean, from an agency perspective, I think there will be just a consolidation. So there will be a whole range of agencies uh, that will downside, uh, downsize and ultimately diminish. So I think uh, that's very likely to happen. Um, for me, that's yeah, that, that's probably one, one of the keys. You just need to be there. I mean, from my perspective, I would like to be there and make sure uh, yeah, we can now um, really make uh, clever investments. Okay, and, and the second one uh, to, to, to finish with is from, is from Jean Lee. Jean was a, a student last year in the FIFA Masters. She's Korean Canadian. And Jean was talking about a few of the sporting organizations have done virtual fan placement for some of their games to mimic pre-corona sports days event. Uh, what are some of sponsors' feedback to that? Do they like it? Uh, I, I don't know if we have enough information yet, um, at least from our perspective. Um, I think it also differs in terms of the nature of your, your sponsorship. So for one example, if we are the sponsor of City Field, the Mets baseball stadium, um, the Aiming Rights partner, I think um, the relationship with the environment is, is much different if we're just maybe one of many um, official uh, partners for an event. Um, I, I think you have to look at it through that lens because of the environment and, and really the context really does shift that conversation. Um, me personally, I was, I was excited to see it just from a fan perspective to know that the game is somewhat like it used to be. Um, but I, I think from a sponsor sponsor's lens, I think it's a bit early for that um, to really have a definitive, at least from from our perspective, to have a definitive yes or no on on how we feel. I think it's just understanding what the environment's going to be and then and then using that to the best of your ability um, based on how it's done in each individual yeah. case. We had a comment earlier on the on a similar issue is uh, from 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 turkey again from one of our former students from turkey and and was saying well you know in turkey they are thinking of reopen the stadium 50 percent uh, uh, for the next uh, next in the next days but 100 percent from for the vip area so it may have uh, negative issues as well with the relationship to, to the fan base isn't it the sponsorship and fandom yeah and i think that's that could be a challenge especially for us as well because most of our um clients that will bring to sporting events would be the vips um that would be in the box hospitalities they are high net worth clients um but knowing that does that create this air of superiority that you want to try to avoid um from a customer base i think that's um certainly it's certainly a challenge that you want to be aware of but from a sponsorship perspective, that's great because then we can utilize our assets in a way that it doesn't cause much change and we can still provide this unique uh, once in a lifetime experience. Well, hopefully once in a lifetime experience to uh, be a, a one of 50 or 100 people in a, a sporting event that usually holds 50,000. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's that's about it. We, 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 had a, we, we saw a, a very large spectrum of reality. We, could not clearly uh, uh, find find big solution, but we we saw what the trends are. It's a, the trends are up towards more innovative and uh, innovative projects that are thinking about where are the priorities, where are the accountability, where are the elements that that improve the interaction between uh, the various actors. That's that's quite interesting and. Uh, uh, I was very pleased to hear uh, that uh, what you learned in our courses were useful 
particularly in this period. Uh, I wish you all a great day and that we, we will have soon the possibility to speak to each other and that the events and the company you work will will come stronger out of it. Well, we will uh, we uh, we will continue our our webinar series uh, uh, on uh, on this uh, fortnight basis for the rest of this of this year. Uh, do not forget to get in touch with us, and uh, if you if you like to know a little bit about our, about our current discussion and our past this this uh, discussion, subscribe to the to the webinar. It has been a pleasure. Uh, next time it will not be a male only panel, I promise you. And I wish you all a great day, uh, and I would say bye bye to all of you.